Hello everyone, my name is Chico. Typically I run the YouTube philosophy channel, The Philosopher, but I've also taught logic in a classroom very successfully for 11 years, and I'm really excited to bring you this class today. Honestly, I think logic is a lot of fun, and I think it's very useful. I think you're gonna get a lot out of this course. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's go ahead and get started. You may wonder, how can I be so sure that you're gonna get a lot out of this? Well, unless I miss my guess, you're here for one of four reasons. The first reason will probably only apply to a few of you guys. You may be about to become a mathematician, a philosopher, or some kind of computer programmer. Personally, myself, I'm a philosopher, and that's where I first started to learn logic. Now, logic is gonna be like a second language for you. You're gonna to have to know how to do logic in order to do your job competently. For you guys, this course is where you're gonna start, and from here, you're gonna branch out into different kinds of logic courses. But you'll want a strong base, and that's what you're gonna get in this course. Secondly, you have to take it. Possibly this is a requirement for your major, or maybe you are in a high school that takes reasoning very seriously. And if that's you, even if you didn't want to take this course in the first place, for reasons I'll explain in a second, I think you're going to find it very helpful and you're going to really enjoy it. Alternatively, you might be in another logic course, but it's difficult to understand. And you're looking for somebody to explain it to you in a way that's comprehensible and yet academically rigorous. Again, that's also what you're going to get in this course. Although I can promise you, you're going to get an outstanding education in logic you're also gonna get something that's interesting and accessible. The third possible reason why you're here is because you think that logic would be useful, and you're right. Let's say, for example, you get an internship at your dream job. You gotta impress them so they'll hire you, but you kinda gotta start it at the bottom with the menial tasks. Your boss comes in and says, the last two interns messed something up and we need you to fix it. She says, I have four stacks of forms here. On each of these forms, on one side we have personal information including whether this person is a customer or an employee. On the back side, we have the form number, which is either an odd or an even number. Now, the thing is that employees have to use even numbered forms. So there's our rule. If it's an employee, then he or she must use an even numbered form. The problem is the last two interns try to sort them out into different stacks, but one of them sorted them into employees versus customers, and the other one sorted them into evens versus odds. We don't need you to restack them. What we need you to do is to look through these stacks and make sure that that rule was followed. If it's an employee, then they used an even numbered form. So time to shine. Time to show your boss that you can fix this faster than they messed it up. Now, as in most things, working smarter, not harder, is probably the best way to go. You look at these four stacks and you wonder, do I have to check through each one of these stacks? Let's consider the employee stack first. Well, of course you have to check this one. You look on the back of the employee forms and you ask yourself, is this an even numbered form? If it's not, then that rule was broken, something went wrong. But do you have to check the customer stack? Well, again, our rule is that if it's an employee, then they must have an even number form. The rule has nothing to say about customers. So we don't care what's on the back side of the customer stack. That's already 25% of your job done. What about the other two stacks? Do you have to check them? Well, let's consider the even stack. Our rule was, if it's an employee, then they must use an even numbered form. So you might think that you have to check this stack. And in fact, a study was done in which most educated people, including people that have taken logic courses, said that they would check this stack. But here's the thing, our rule was, if it's an employee, then it must be an even number form. Our rule was not that if it's an even number form, then it must be an employee. So if I flip the even number form over and I saw that it was a customer, okay, no big deal. So I don't actually have to check this stack. 50% of your job done. What about that last stack? Odds. Do we need to check that one? Well, think about it. Our rule was if it's an employee, then it must have an even number form. If we flip over one of these odd forms and we see that it's an employee, uh-oh, we blew it. So we have to check this stack too. Now here's the thing, this is quintessential logic. This is all about how conditionals work. And if you knew that, then you would be able to do your job well and do it in half the time than you could have done it otherwise. And imagine those are big stacks, so big that it takes you a full day to check just one stack. Well, that means you've done your job in two days when it could have taken you four. So yes, logic will be very useful for you. And the final reason you might be taking this course is because you wanna learn how to reason well, and logic is instrumental to that. Now, I believe this is something that applies to everyone. We all hold certain cherished beliefs about reality, and they're important to us for some reason or another. It might be about religion or politics. For example, does God exist? What exactly constitutes free speech? Likely you have some opinion about ethics. For example, is torture okay when it's to save the lives of people? You might even have strong opinions about sports or arts. Personally, I have friends that will get in long and heated debates about which is the best basketball team. Or you may really have a strong opinion about what exactly constitutes art. Now, many of these beliefs 
you believe for particular reasons. And many of us want to convince others of these beliefs using these reasons. Let's say, for example, that it's really important to you that tomatoes are considered vegetables. Now, there are some ways of reasoning that make these beliefs more probable than others. For example, you could reason like this. Tomatoes taste bad. Most vegetables taste bad. Therefore, tomatoes are probably a vegetable. But there are other ways of reasoning that guarantee the truth of the belief. For example, the seed-bearing structure of a flowering plant is a fruit. The tomato is a seed-bearing structure of a flowering plant. Therefore, the tomato is a fruit. Now, obviously, the method that guarantees the truth would be preferable. And the method of reasoning that most often guarantees this truth is logic. So, logic is for everyone. And this course is for everyone. As I said, it will be academically rigorous, but I'll do my best to make sure it's also accessible, interesting, and maybe even a little entertaining. Now, on to some business. The book that we're going to be using in this course is Nicholas J.J. Smith's Logic, the Laws of Truth. This book is packed with really good stuff. Most introduction to logic books just get straight into how to do it. Smith does a really good job of explaining to you what you're doing and why you're doing it. I actually looked for a long, long time for a really good introduction to logic book. Not just for this course, but for courses that I was teaching in the classroom as well. And I really think this is my favorite. This is the one that I thought explained things the best. Now, how are we going to use this book? In each video description, I'll tell you what you should read or what you should do before actually watching that video and what you should read or do for the next time. I'll also do my best, and I might not always remember this, but I'll also do my best to say in one video what you should do for the next video. As far as the exercises go, the answers to these exercises are actually given online by the author himself. However, in my videos, I'll walk you through the exercises to make sure that you understand them. But I do have one big request. Please, please, please do the exercises before you watch the video. Really, our brains are built so that we learn much better by doing than by seeing. So if you just sit back and watch me, you're not going to get what you need out of this course. And I really want you to walk away from this course able to do logic well. So please, do the exercises first, then check the videos to make sure that you got them. One way you could do it, by the way, is to do one problem, watch that part of the video, pause it, do the next problem. That way you make sure that while you're doing the exercises, you're understanding them. So there's the intro to this course, but I want to say one more time, thank you very much for joining me in this course. As I said before, I'm really excited to teach it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to get a lot out of it. For next time, please read in your book section 1.1, What is Logic?